Rich Carl here. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. That was really hard. I'm trying to wait, hold my breath because Margaret should have hit the button and the video comes up. I'm turning bright red. Today's broadcast, we're going to cover the layout inspector, <laughs> which is kind of funny, which is about an eight and a half minute conversation. But then we're going to cover preferences tables today. We're going to do that. So those of you who actually missed yesterday or went today, but you're going to miss today, we're going to cover the thing that you really wanted to see yesterday. Uh, today is on, uh, we're going to cover the, the low-hanging fruit first. Then we're going to pivot to prefer, uh, preferences. But along the way, if we have questions on topic or data modeling stuff, let me know. So this is a copy of starting point. Here's FileMaker trying to update me. I'll update me later. That thing we're doing today, yesterday was so great because Calvin was able to do the insert with the object calculation. He tied it in. That was such a great day yesterday. Yesterday's training was really, live stream was really good. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. We're going to talk about this. So if I go to like contacts right here, file, manage. So let's just cover this again. Database, that's where your field definitions go. That's where your tables are in there and your relationship graph such as it is security we're not talking about that today but that's where you set your passwords up value list is something i'm just going to select it okay so this is the value list i always get to this from over here right i almost never come over to this area here it's good that they do it. it's kind of uniform right that's value list then you have file manage scripts which is normally right here it used to be called the script maker and then it changed the script workspace but remember all this stuff is the reason it's here is because when people created this in filemaker pro 1 or whenever they created this back in 1990 they said oh let's stick it up under here right and then somewhere over here was defined fields and this idea of an organized you know solution you know it all grew organically that's why it spread all over so claris left it here so as to not to confuse all the old people and then they also put it under here for everyone who's younger than say 35 you can use this one over here scripts external data source we're not covering that containers we've discussed this quite a bit custom functions all right so custom functions are custom functions custom menus uh if satan lives in filemaker he mostly lives in here so I would not, I would not open up uh, custom menus, themes. We're going to do with some themes and styles. We're going to have Nick come and help us with that. I'm going to put electric shock collar on Nick when we get to this, uh, because uh, that way, when he says anything weird or controversial, I'm going to hit a little button over here, and it's going to shock his headset. That's what we're going to do to Nick, because he and he'll get zapped about eight times, and he'll get really pissed off. <laughs> All right, so uh, manage layout. This is what today's conversation is about, okay? So here's the essential items on this, okay? One, we got the monkey spread plugin installed here. Monkey spread from Christian Schmidt. This little column right here is something that monkey spread puts in here. I think it's the uh, I internal ID number. Remember, we always talked about how FileMaker, you know, normally you don't see this. Normally you would never see this column. But remember we say, well, you can rename scripts and you can rename layouts and you can rename fields and it doesn't break anything. That's because there's a hidden internal ID. I think this is the internal hidden ID for two layouts, right? Or for not two layouts, for all the layouts, right? And so you won't have two that have the same number, right? If you see 1121 and 1122, these were probably created back to back. I think it's a, it's a sequential numbering. And notice that there are different spots because they get moved around and resequenced and reordered, right? Layout name, okay? Associated table, okay? Once again, that should say table occurrence, okay? That's not the, oh no, that's, Actually, hang on. Let's just verify something real quick. Now, that's a table occurrence because preferences here is called that, right? So this should be table occurrence, T-O. Should be table occurrence up here. There is no, <laughs> there's no such thing in the world of FileMaker as associated table. There's the base table. There's table occurrences. There's menu sets. Once again, this is where Satan hides in your solution, okay? I, I, unless you want some sort of poltergeist movie, don't go there. All right, so then over here on the left, if it looks like a little laser is shooting its way out of here, or that's a uh, cherry bomb, if those of you ever grew up with uh, fireworks at the 4th of July, so that looks like a cherry bomb right there going off. That's a script trigger indicator, that there is a layout, a layout-based script trigger, not an object or a file script trigger. That's a layout-based script trigger, okay? You can also see the numbering in here. 
It's not the best, but the numbers sequentially do don't. That's not too bad. And we have groups in here like that. That's pretty great. And then you have once again the table of currents, the menu set, the menu number. Okay, pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about this, we're going to hit this and we're going to move on. The thing is in here that the one area that's kind of interesting to know about, and it's I just I'm going to caution you. You go to layouts. These check boxes, they're all on. Okay, if you turn it off, what happens is it doesn't show up under here anymore. Okay. So when you're, if you're in, well, not in, in layout mode, they always show up, but in browse mode, see the running assumption is that this menu right here works the same here in browse mode as it does in layout mode. And that's generally a true statement unless you go to file, manage, layouts, and you ch uncheck some of these check boxes, right? You turn a bunch of these off. Like if I come over here and turn these off. So I've turned off all the ones on this contacts menu here. In fact, I even can hide contacts. Or I could just say it's there, but it's blank, right? Then I hit er, and then those two right there. Then I'm going to say, I'm going to come down. I'm going to I'm going to close the window. I'm going to go the layout mode. If we go to layout, we still see contacts. They're all there. If I go to browse mode real quick, contacts is there, but it's grayed out because there's nothing under it that's activatable, right? So I here's the problem, and even I've done this. You're like, hey, I'm going to keep someone out of the restricted secure area by turning it off. That works in so much as that all your users are dumb and not in any way inventive, and they also don't have any incentive to get into the system to change something. Like if I tell, like goes back to the, the unfortunate incident with Josh Ormond and Wim DeCourt. We, I, I told someone, I told, I put up a challenge out there, famous last words, up two hundred dollars in cash to whoever can break into the file, and and the security wasn't quite this dumb, but it was similar levels of dumb, and they got into it a different way, and I ended up paying out the two hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks for me was nothing; it was educational, but I, I put two hundred dollars of incentive if they could break into it, so they had incentive to do that. So. As long as you can use this level of security of hiding this from people, as long as they do not have financial incentive to break into it, okay? That's the deal. If they have financial incentive or they want to one-up you and show your boss how stupid you are as a FileMaker developer, then you've got it, Then that's not going to be good. Um, you have to secure it properly by going into the file, manage security. I was looking for it alphabetically and it wasn't. Security right here, okay? Makes sense? If we go into that, uh, one, uh, well, let's cover this, finish cleaning this up. If you open up here, one of these, um, this is this layout setup is the same layout setup that you have on the layout, right? It's exactly the same dialogue. You can change the name. So this one thing, you could kind of rename things in here, kind of go through and resequence in here, okay? Views, which views are available, printing, scripts. So that's kind of it. Now, I want to point out something because Centaur asked this question. It was a really great question. Um, well, she asked a different, actually a different question, but it brought this question up as well. And basically the idea is like, how, what are my options for displaying data in FileMaker? And she didn't say it this way and this is a derivation of her question, but I think this is, occurred to me that this is a question. You can display data in one of five ways without scripts, without any scripting. Okay. Four ways. Five ways, four ways, five ways. Form view. So on the layout, one record is the entire screen. List view, we covered this the other day. List view is where the body part repeats down the page. So if I go to layout mode right here, so this is the body part right here, body part, body parts. It, if you're in form view, you only get one of these on a screen at one time. If you're in a list view, or table view, this gets repeated down, down the page. So if I go over here to mouse, contacts, list view, here's the body here. And so if I go to browse mode, it's showing me three records. But what if I say view it as a form view? So I, this is up here. It's an option. I can, those checkbox, I can, oh, oh, it's turned off. Okay, so I go to layout mode. Okay, I'm going to hit the little pencil. This is the layout setup. You can also get it with the pencil right here. 
views, I'm going to turn on these two right here. So it's form view and table view, okay? Table view should only be used by professional developers to, if you want to, if you need a list view quick that you don't want to build the list view, you can use a form view. So now I go back to browse mode. Remember it was, it's in uh, list view now. If I go to form view, one body per layout at a time. And if I flip record control here, I flip records, right? So form view, list view. You can also put a portal on the screen to display kind of list data in a portal. Essentially, those are your three display modes or options that you have. Let's talk about preferences. Let's talk about a preference table. What is a preference table? So here is the deal. Let's go into this solution right here. This is starting point. I'm gonna, it doesn't matter. So here, here it is. This is a, lay, a, a window that's displaying a layout that's attached to context. This is a window that's displaying a layout attached to, uh, let's say invoices, that'll be easy, okay? Very different. What is a preferences table and why do we give it? Okay, first let's go back to, now Margaret, we're gonna play a Jeopardy. People have to have it in the form of a question. So I will take sounds that animals make for 100, okay? That's a set. SNL Jeopardy joke. All right, we're not going to do that. Uh, but no, seriously, if we go into here and you have a layout, this is the context layout here. If I want to put data in here and save data, I'm on Richard Carlson's record, okay? And then I go to Rufus the cat, which is a cat, a rescue cat that we kind of help support, okay? Rufus the cat, I don't have a picture of the black and white tabby cat, okay? Marg C, uh, Carl Tone. So there's Margaret, okay? If I put data in this, as you define fields, text, number fields, calculation fields, the data that we type in here, because I'm trying to, the idea is that you save data, the data is saved at the record level, okay? So what if you want to have a value that's set for the whole system? For example, um, at the top of the system, it says uh, Acme Explosives, right? So Ed Burkle, has been a fire marshal. He's a good guy. But uh, the problem with Ed is that he has decided that he was in the he was in the law part of the, the business. Now he wants to be in the disorder part of the business. So he is going to go into explosive business where he disassembles things professionally, right? And so Ed goes, well, I'm in this contact solution here and I want the company name, company name uh, or the uh, sol or solution name. We'll call it the solution name name of this solution that we uh, built here. This is Burkle's Explosives Incorporated, okay? So we create this. But you know that if we create it in here, if we put data in here, it's saved with the individual record. Well, I'm gonna make it a global so it shows up everywhere, okay? So we're gonna say text field, we're gonna say create text field, and then we're gonna say storage options are that it's a global, okay? So then what I would do just to help me out, I put G underscore in here so I know it's a global, okay? I hit okay. Then at the top of the layout, top of the layout, I'm gonna, I've got the uh, solution name. I can put it up here, up here. I can make it, you know, maybe jumbo bigger. You need like a catchy name these days. How about Burkle, Burkle Bombs Incorporated? Yeah, bombs, right? Oops. So you have it over here in contacts. Okay, and you're like, ah, I've got Burkle Bombs Incorporated, okay? Well, but then if I put it in, the, but you want it to be on, on the top of every window because you want people to know what solution they're in. That's a valid thing. Normally you'd put it over the side, out of the way, something. You wouldn't necessarily uh, do it like that. Uh, there's list view, there's contacts, there's detail view. So the issue is, is that you post it to the server. And how do global fields behave when you post to a server? When you make a change, they don't get saved. So every time someone opens a solution, it doesn't say Burkle bombs, it's probably blank. Would you have to have the opening startup script set information into the, wait, hold on, I'm confused. The global, you're right. Why? So, no, okay, I am you, right. I'm gonna extend your idea because this is the most obvious thing. What do we talk about globals? You define a global. If you want to control what they say, you better freaking set that probably on the startup script. 
So you can guarantee to set it. We have a startup script. We talked about this before. If I go to scripts, workspace, somewhere in here is a startup script, preferences, startup right here. And in here, if you scroll down, you'll see somewhere we have some globals that are set. See, like here's a calendar settings that we set right here. So that as you boot starting point, it's going to show you the appropriate calendar because the calendar set in a global one. Why do we set? So what's the fundamental about globals? Fundamental uh, about how do they behave in a multi-user environment? Um, anyone can put information into it and it won't be copied across all the users, even if they're all staring at the same layout. And then what happens is that they it's not saved to the computer. It's not saved. So every time you open it up, it has to have that value set. Now, you could go into startup scripts and say, Burkle Bombs Incorporated. No problem. Okay. But then every time you have a global, it's a pain in the ass. So what we want to do is we need a global. So so in the book, when I when we took the we wrote the book and we're going to be updating the book here shortly, the book calls calls global fields as private global fields. Because in a host environment, which most of all of us should be using on a FileMaker server, the globals are not saved. Therefore, uh, the, and they're only specific to your session, you as a user. So if I'm on this computer over here, then I'm on this computer over here, right? Then what happens is that uh, this computer has a globals, the other computer has globals, everyone else has their own set of globals in a host environment. Um, and then when you close the whatever values you had go away if you're running the file locally like i am right here then you're the only user and filemaker can save them and it will save them okay but that's kind of a outlier deal if you're a brand new developer maybe you're like centaur uh, she may or may not be using server i don't know uh, hopefully she's using server because she's doing important work you want to back up automatically but the globals aren't saved so what you need is a global that saves that ain't, that, as we say in the business and with bad English, that ain't a thing. It's not something that exists. There is no global that saves. So what you need is we had to create our own. So that's what the preference table is. A preference table is a table that will only, 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 only have one record in it ever. And I'm watching Margaret's eyes and they're spinning. She Why would the one record have anything to do I'm not connecting. We're with not going to use globals there. We're going to use regular fields there. Got it. <laughs> so because you're not using globals, you only want the one record because that way there's only one master set of information to be duplicated everywhere else. Well, not du duplicate. Just one master set that you can reference. Yeah, reference. Sorry, not duplicating, referencing. Um, we do have questions, by the way, since other questions from David Angel. Uh, each view should have a separate layout? Question mark. If we're back to the view conversation over here, I'm just going to wind backwards to the, just the previous thing we did. Talked about form view, list view, a table view is an outlier. I would not combine them on the screen at the same time. For example, in starting point. So th this is starting point. If I hit list view here, I jump to a different layout. Oh, I'm on invoices. Let me go to contacts. So contacts, form view, contacts, list view. They're different layouts. This one would normally be set that way. So then you come over here, you see a list. So here you see a form. Forget this thing over here. This on the side is a master detail portal. Forget about that. Essentially what you folks are dealing with is dealing with this. So a form view here, list view here. So David's like, well, what if I should do it? I'm just, I'm playing devil's advocate. So I'm allowing you to answer your own question, right, David? If you're on here, you say, well, I only want one layout. Okay, well, then you have this layout that looks like this, or maybe it's a little smaller, right? But then you're like, well, I want to be a list view. And you're like, okay, so then so then it's, you see the form, but then as you scroll, then there's the next one. So if you build a, a layout like this, it's just kind of an ugly interface. You're it not would muted. defeat the purpose of a list view, right? Because when you want a list view, you want to look at a lot of information simultaneously in like a small space. And form view is not designed for that, or form view layouts aren't designed to do that. So let me go to Amazon real quick. Let's just look at this, right? Okay, so here's what we have. So so just think about it from their perspective, okay? So for the top is the header. In fact, actually the header's all the way up in this whole section here. Forget the side for the moment, okay? You come down here. So what 
Amazon has built is a, this is their list view. Instead of in horizontal rows, they got these kind of block, block, block kind of deals, like a gallery view. I could probably, I don't know if I could switch or not. How about eBay? eBay is similar, but th this is the same model that we deal with everywhere. Oh, let's say, um, here we go, Bell 206 part. <laughs> Something I know quite a bit about. All right, so here you go. That's your header up here. That is a fat list view. See, forget the thing on the side. That's like, uh, it's like part of the header that's on the side if you can extend the header down the side, okay? Uh, oh, see, look right there. That right there, that's the grid view from Amazon. And there's the list view right there. So they they have list view, but it has two different variants of the list view, kind of a gallery one and a list view one. But that's two variations of the list view, right? Pretty great. So I'm going to say list view. I'm going to say apply changes. Doo, doo, doo. Okay. Put th okay. This is dumb. They Someone hasn't tested this lately. So this, the thumbnail got small, but the body part didn't contract the fill. Okay, that's just, that's just bad coding. Okay, if I go to customize again, or I go to, uh, I go customize, I switch to a gallery view. So that's the idea. So this is the Amazon view. Once again, it's a list view. Okay, so I, I'm off in the weeds here, I think. I don't remember what I was supposed to do. We were talking about why you don't want list view and form view to be on the same layout. Why not just yeah. make one layout for it? St you know, stacking piles and piles. It's like trying to read the newspaper. Uh, no one reads the newspaper. We're trying to, I don't even know how to do, come up with an analogy for this. I have a paper analogy. Imagine your desk covered with papers from your mail, and you're trying to find the electric bill at the bottom of the pile, okay? Assuming that they're sending you a paper bill in the in the mail, physical mail, right? And you have all this stuff pile up. How do you sort through that to see things, right? That's why different layouts for organization, just to separate things, to keep it simpler to manage and to understand. All right. Next question. If you upload to the server with the global field that has data in the global field, doesn't that persist forever? Yeah, Ed, yeah, I wasn't going to get into that, but the answer is yes, right? So, yeah. So oh, if you're running a file locally and we put Burkle bombs in that field and then I upload the server, it will be in there forever. But, the, well, forever until you do a set field to change it. Okay, but... What happens in the next session when you reopen the file? Would it go back to being that value? Interesting. Yeah, it's, that's the starting weird. value for it. That's very weird. <laughs> I mean, it, it makes a, sense an, with the internal logic, but it's not something that I would have intuitively thought of. Well, in ideal world, there should be a checkbox in it where it's resets to it, it clears itself and resets to zero after every after a new session. That would be an obvious thing to put in there that to remove this weirdness. Partly because people I think would have local solutions and move them to the server and bring them back locally. And I think there was some sort of expectation on that. I think I think fundamentally at a training level, if you have globals, you should assume the data is all uh, uh, temporary and disposable. Now you may not want it to be disposable, but you should assume that if you don't take care of it, FileMaker will dispose of it for you. Okay, because certainly in a hosted solution, you put data in there and this a person crashes their computer or they close their session, it's gone. So and then it'll re, it'll resort back to being blank. So if you do, so if you put a solution like right now, Burkle bombs is in here. Okay, if I close this and then open on server, every time I open this up, this will Burkle bombs will be here, right? Um, that's because it was defined as a in the local solution. We the data edits in a local solution. Then we post a server. If you define a field on a file that's already on the server, then it will always start off as blank. So this is why, if you have some globals and you really they need to have a certain value, then you need to set those as a startup script. You you could say something like, "Well, I'll just make it local, and then I'll clear them, and then I'll post it back up." That's assuming you or the next person remembers to do that in six months or a year. And, you know, it's very kind of fragile that way, right? Because you have to remember to do that. Whereas if you set it in the startup script, it's pretty damn quick, right? And then it's it would always, always, always be correct. You could guarantee it would always be one, great. Even if someone made the file local, it's going to set it. It's 100% reliable if you set it in the startup script as opposed to 
Well, I'm going to change it over here. Then I'm going to repost it to the server. And then I'm going to go on vacation. Then Sally's going to work on it while I'm gone. And she doesn't remember this. So she's going to download it, make changes, not clear the globals, then post it back to the server. And then we've got a problem just because she's not in your head, right? So it's just this general, when you build a solution, you want it to be not require documentation and be as idiot proof as possible. So that's why you set the globals, you build the globals on the server or you just set them in a startup script, okay? Next question, David says, globals are used like input variables. You can use them as input variables. So what, what, what did we do yesterday? We talked about don't put delete Things that don't, like Dennis O'Leary, don't buy the toys that make the noise. If you have kids or grandkids someday, don't buy the toys that make the noise. So if you have, if you have Clarice, right, and she has an auto recording voice box in her, and if you shake her like this, ha ha, buy Clara Studio right now. Okay, you put her down, then the cab bumps her. Ah, buy Clara Studio right now. And she just all day, ah, buy Clara Studio right now. All day, every day, don't buy the toys that make the noise. What happens with this is that as we go into the field definitions on this, the, the solution that we have for Big Valley Aviation, what we would do, I, I can open up starting point right here. This is an X1. So in this one right here, if you go to um, projects and I say, I want to add a, I click on, I get rid of, well, I'll just create a new record here. And I click over here and I can select, but there's no option here to add a new one. Okay. No option to add a new contact, right? Can I do that from invoices? If I say new, where Nick did this and it drove me bonkers. So somewhere Nick built this uh, option where he would say, add a new record, okay? And when you would press the button, it, it and this is recent. This is like not like Nick from 30 years ago. This is recent, driving me bonkers. He would actually pop a card style window and create a new record. The problem is, is that when you're in the process of adding a new person, you might change your mind. You frequently change your mind. And when he would run, get to the bottom of it, if you hit cancel, it would delete the record. And that's just bad on so many levels. I told Nick, I said, no, 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 no. So partly what we've been doing with starting point is fixing this stuff. So to answer David Angel's question, if I go to Big Valley Aviation, customer solution that's running. We've worked, you've seen me in the helicopter place once in a while when I go visit them and I work on their solution. If I go to a work order and I create a new work order and I say assign a contact, same as starting point when I press this right here and there's a little flash as it dismisses the one window, but it brings this up. These are global fields. If you hit cancel, it simply dismisses the dialog or this window, this layout closes. It actually closes the uh, close. I think the command is close the window. I could probably do script debugger. Let me see script debugger. Cancel. It just says close window, right? Because this layout is actually another window superimposed on the other one's a card style. Step down, it's done. So if you actually hit yes to create it, it takes all, it, it runs a script where it creates a new record. Then it does a bunch of set fields from the global to the real fields. Dun, ding. Okay. So the goal with globals is to do data entry into them. I highly endorse that because that way you can unwind it and cancel without going to FileMaker and deleting a record. Right. And as soon as you put a delete rec a delete record script step in a script somewhere, it will always anytime data disappears out of your customer solution, you'll always be suspicious that it fired by accident or on purpose, or you made an error. If you never put a script in that deletes records, then if a customer says, I delete a record, it means that they literally went in and found a spot in the system and hit delete records. So that's why globals are so extraordinarily valuable. Different than preferences, right? So the preference, are we clear on the preferences? We need to look back to that. So yeah, so preference tables, so preference table wouldn't really have any global fields, right? Because the idea is that so how do you make a preference table work? Do you attach it through relationships to every other? Yeah, so let's talk about that real quick. So so what we do is we, if I go to tables over here, let's start tables and you go down to preferences, notice it has one record. In fact, during the startup script, one of the checks the startup script does is checks to see if there's more than one record in here. And it throws a dialog box saying contact your developer because bad juju is happening inside the solution. Someone created a second preference record. Oh. So you only want one. Notice there's one right here. 
If you go to relationships, then every member, a, a layout attaches to the anchor. These are the buoys. Um, so here is T24 over here, uh, T1, T24. The, the goal that these could be reordered a little bit. The point though is that they're unique, right? Here's invoices, is 2015, pretty well organized. And I, for whatever reason it goes, yeah, I'm not sure why it's like that, but T24 is right here. It, it, it somewhere over here is preferences, right? So if I go here, preference, here's preferences. So whenever I'm trying to do something and value it, I'll move it out of the way so I can see it. I can get the little relational dialogue here. I have a field in the system called ID constant, okay? You could do a cross product, and I've never been able to establish a performance benefit one way or the other. You could uh, use this Cartesian join right here where it says any record over here connects to any record over here, but you still have to identify a field on that. It's, it's kind of dumb, right? Like if I was gonna do this solution right here, what I do is these ID constants always are a one. It's a calculation field, index calculation field with the number one. So one always equals one, so this always works. Plus, since it's a one, I can total them up on the other side to do math on them with a summary, uh, a sum statement, okay? So if, if, a, if, if, if everyone, if every table has a, ID constant with one in it, then at any point you can connect any table to any table. The reason I do the, don't do this is because I was doing this first. Then Claris, and this is one of those moments where I wasn't consulted. And, 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 it, and here's the training problem with this, right? You ready for this training problem? So this is right here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to duplicate it. And we're going to do it the other way. We'll call this 21. Uh, it's it's in the way I got my there we go 21 we'll do three B's B B B okay so we're gonna say okay so then I'm gonna roll this down and you're like well I want to do a Cartesian join okay okay so you want any one to connect the other one well normally I said ID constant ID constant because it's a concrete thing I can wrap your head around well to make a Cartesian join you just grab anything over here and drag it to anything over here. And you're like, what? And then you move this around so you can see the little box. Then you double click it. And you're like, well, I've got ID staff underscore foreign key to calendar CCS5. But you change it to Cartesian join. You hit change. Okay. And then you're like, now it's functional. It's the equivalent of what I've done. But but think about trying to explain this to you. Yeah, this is what I an awkward moment, shall we say, right? Very awkward. Okay. An awkward moment. You're like, well, to connect it, I took this and I connected to any field over here. Well, how? And then, and then, and you have a Cartesian join, and it shows that we're using these two over here to connect to each other, and there's a Cartesian in between, which means anytime this, they always work, and it doesn't matter what was up here. So, if it doesn't matter, why are those two still there? Because by putting them there, it implies that they're important, but they're not. As soon as you put this X right here, what was in down here didn't matter anymore at all. Zero. What even is the point of doing this? Like the 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 big. I'm I'm actually confused. Back at the beginning, the, okay. this is confusing. Let's wind but it like, backwards. Let's wind it backwards. Wind it backwards. So. So why any, would you connect all of the fields to all of the other fields? What purpose does that just, serve? Just by stop. Just stop. 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 Back in the day, before the Cartesian was born. What we had to do is we had preferences table. A preference table is a single record with text and number fields in it that we can set. And when we set it and it saved the server, then everyone gets that update at the same time. That's a preference table. It has one record. If I change something there, and I and of course this gets into this idea that if you're changing things constantly there with some sort of script, every time you make a change there, it goes out to the server and then everyone who's logged in gets an update and their screen might flash a little bit or not, okay? But notwithstanding that, that's the whole idea. Globals don't do that. They don't populate everywhere. A text and number field populates everywhere. If we have one record and everyone sub is sub all the tables and all the layouts are subscribed, I'm using that word loosely, subscribe to that preference record. If you make a change, they all see the update, okay? So Claire, and, and, to, and to make it, listen, you could put, as long as the two fields have the same value, you can connect them. So you could have doggy five and doggy five on two sides and it would work. 
But instead of me creating some sort of arbitrary, I decide to use a one number numeral one and a numeral one. One and one are always connected. So there's an auto, there's over here in uh, T24, if I go to fields, I'm in, let's go to work orders, work orders. There's an ID constant in here somewhere. ID, remember all IDs are together, constant. There it is, it's a calculation one. Every record, so 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 this is a, a, a calculation that always equals one. So if I have 100 records in there, each value of every record will be one. So, so each record can talk to the preferences table. They all match up. So every record in every table can talk to preferences okay. and vice versa, it's a two-way street. Cool. Then what happens is Clarice goes, well, a bunch of people asked us for this. So we're gonna build this Cartesian joint. It's called Cartesian joint, okay? And what it is is that if you come over here and you put it in, you they're gonna say, ah, you don't have to use, I mean, let me, how am I, I sorry, let me help out with this. Except then people go, well, then what's the two fields down below? They don't matter. They don't matter? They don't matter. So wait, so instead of having a value enter, it makes it so all the fields will automatically equal each other irrespective of what's actually Not inside the field. Not the fields, the relationship will uh, turn on. Yeah. It's a, it's a mandatory override turn on thing. So basically nothing has to match because it'll force it to match. Okay. So that means that all the fields will therefore match all the other fields. Which is the same as the thing with the one. It's identical, except you okay. didn't have to define a one. But when I did it my way, it logically made sense. If you select up here and do this, should gray all this out and make it go away, just saying that these two tables will always connect together. Well, like I said, it, it's a weird concept because it's hard to wrap your brain around. Like I said, the one makes sense. You can track, oh, it has a one, so therefore it always equals the one, which means you can always track the one. Uh, but every field equaling every other field, no matter what you've put into it. What else would you do with that except a preference table? Is it only for preference table? Does it serve any other purpose? Uh, people could use it for <laughs> just getting all the data out of something and totaling it up or whatever, I guess. I don't know. The point is what's 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 misleading about it is the fact no, that- No, it's you, very confusing. Cause like I said- because you, yeah. you still have over here like, well, I can have it attached to this one and I can say, you know, change it. And I want this one over here and I can change it. It's like- Yeah, like if they're gonna do it, they should just get rid of like the entire bottom box and then- the X also doesn't make sense. I guess they've already used the equals sign somewhere. Yeah, because that's the normal relationship. So that's oh, equal, normal. not equal. That And then the greater than and less than are almost never useful, except on a deal where I remember using it in FileMaker 2, where we were doing zip codes and shipping labels. And if the zip code was greater than this zip code level or less than, then you were in a certain zip, uh, like FedEx, pricing area or the postal service pricing area so if you're greater than say 9,000 like the zip codes these are country not country codes the, the regional codes the united states call them zip codes it's a postal code okay postal code between this range and this range and you could put it in there but there might be 5,000 different numbers in that range well you don't want to say equals this number equals this number equals this number you say between the range it's a range function it has interesting. pretty or 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 you're gonna send the uh, uh you want it to display like uh anyone who's over say the R44 helicopter has a maximum seat weight of 300 pounds. So if you're over greater than 300 pounds, it should the relationship will pop up and say, hey, you're over the seat weight or something like that, right? Okay, that's actually cool, but it's very niche. Uh, so yeah, the Cartesian join thing is the weird. range is niche. <laughs> The, the equals and the not equals and the Cartesian makes sense. This makes sense. This makes sense. All these make sense. This one right here shouldn't even show you fields over here. It should say table. Yeah, no, it should table, just, if you click the it. X, it should just like show the tables. Like you said, everything else rolls up because then it, that would visually make sense. Like, okay, so it's making sure that everything always connects. Still weird, but that makes, the, they, they could definitely help it visually out more. <laughs> Me and Margaret are pretty close. We keep muting and unmuting. So uh, David Angel says, I mean, if you need a user to write into a variable, you use a global field instead. Oh, write it to a variable. Yeah, you can't directly write to a variable. Well, a custom dialogue can write directly to a variable. 
So that, okay, so that's an interesting question, kind of, I guess. So if you're on a layout, I'm gonna discard all this stuff. I'm discarding everything, discard all changes. Uh, so so let's talk about data entry just briefly here. This is such a overwhelming solution here. Oh, where's the blank? I need a blank solution here. Let me just go to, I'm gonna call it name, okay? So we're saying, okay, so we're on a layout and you have this thing called name. So that is a field, okay? It can be a, so we talk about global fields, but really global fields, the modern term for that is a field with global storage, okay? But it's a global field, right? So this can be a field or a global field, right? It cannot be a variable. You cannot specify this, um, at least to my knowledge, uh, as a variable where you put the data in, it goes into variable. How do you put data in variables? You set it with a set variable command and or the one outlier, which is kind of a weird little deal, is I think you can do it with the uh, show custom dialogue, which is this thing that everyone as a beginner plays with it. And then everyone as it become more of an intermediate to advanced developer, wishes this was just never in there, but it's educational and useful. So here's the message. Hello, Dave, David. Angel. Okay. And then you could say, hi. Okay. Cancel. Then you could say input fields. And here's the input field. Show input field one. Yes. Yeah, so let's show input field one. Here's the name. Ooh, can we put that? There's name. What if I put a, go back to that. What if I specify a variable dollar, dollar, I'll put var name so we know it's different than the name i hit okay okay so what is that that's the var name label we'll call it var name and this one right here is going to be name and this will just be field name with okay okay we're gonna hit pull uh save play all right so var name is doggy six and the field name is david okay so if I hit OK, this should set into there in that. And if we go now, how would you see what's in a variable, Margaret, a global variable? Um, you would pull up the data viewer, right? Correct. Now, what if I say, how do you show me what's in a local variable? You would have, you have to pause the script, right? If you have to go yes. through like, the script debugger and then question. stop it you, right you, on top right of now, it. Right now, you wouldn't see it. That's why I did a global variable because it would have been born and then would have died an instant death as it was uh flush from memory uh script uh data view right here tables missing oh hang on current there we go so it it worked correctly so setting a variable well you can also do a let let function can do a, a set of variable too a let com, a let statement can set a variable all right other questions rick fosnat new term ceo proof there you go uh, okay we got questions on youtube here or these are from yesterday we have morning. questions also from twitch so, right. so, so uh, there's no questions that we're just gonna do questions it's a I, top of the hour but i'm gonna take the questions and we're done we're done and tomorrow will be li reminder uh, licensing and how much filemaker costs and claire east will be the official spokesman tomorrow if i want to put a quick search field on each layout how and why is that related to preferences Putting uh, a search field on a layout is a separate topic. It's not a five-second conversation. That's from Centaur. It's from Centaur, yeah. yes. And that uh, was a leftover question. We didn't deal with that yesterday. That's a whole live stream in and of itself. It's not a simple thing, and it has nothing to do with preferences. I remember I had to reverse engineer yours, and that took me like a while of rooting around to try to figure out how it was working. I haven't done a global search. Uh, oh, global search. No, I oh, okay. I guess I, we did the layout search. Anyway, never mind. Normally you do find mode, you put data in the find and you have to find it, but you have to, you have, it has to be in a table uh, and you have to have access to that table. So somehow that has to be scripted. So there's a uh, map of R from MS in video once upon a time, I built that and it was a technique that other people have used. I have not seen it. We'll get Calvin or someone to present on that. It's a little bit of a, I don't want to say a hack, but it's not a default behavior. There's no behavior in FileMaker that it magically allows you to auto search through all the tables. You, the quick find allows you to search through all the all the fields in the current layout, but quick find can be really slow because most people don't set it up correct. Nick's a big fan of quick find. Um, and then just a comment, but never thought on that using a show dialogue to allow the operator to input into a variable. That's a cool idea. 
Well, it's there, um, but it sucks because that dialogue is not customizable and not really great. It's better to use a, if you really want a better interface, use a card style window. Um, but you can't, you'd have to input into a global field and then your script that picks up would move it to a variable, right? That's why, like in the Big Valley Aviation stuff I did, um, I just, you know, I, I, I personally built it. It's, I built a solution that I would want to use it's kind of part of my strategy with that. And so if we got back to this deal where you have work orders, I had a new work order, I go to the very last work order, we're over here, we want to do this. I want to add a new contact because none of these people are in there. Um, this is a card style. That's because you can't make a custom dialogue look like this. And even if you resize it a little bit on your computer, that sizing is not preserved as you move it to other people's computers. So it defaults back to this little tiny rinky-dink size. You lose control over that. So doing a card style window and making globals in there is by far the most flexible thing you can do. It's, it's highly recommended what I do. All right, that's it. All right, cool, everyone. We'll catch you tomorrow. See you. Thanks. Bye. Biomaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Biomaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir. Oh,